Hello everybody. I have one big mess in front of me. Okay. And I know I do. I'm going to explain what it is in a minute. Some of you might recognize logos on a few things that are moving around. But I have been 3D printing for weeks now. And I'm going to clean up these parts and I'm going to explain a few things. And I got something to try. Okay, I'm looking for that my hobby room is a total and complete disaster. That is one of the reasons I am not building anything quickly right now. This room is just trashed. And I do mean trash trashed. Okay. The other reason is life has been harsh. Ooh, confetti. Just what I needed. I'm opening a box right now, and there's probably a sh shipping invoice. Yeah, it's just a shipping invoice. Um, I've been looking for... I've been watching videos on 3D printing here and there. And on one of the channels I stumbled across, I came across the glue test like I had done. And it was talking about how to glue things together and how strong glues were. And he came across this stuff. Whoa, don't drop that. It's 3D Gloop. Okay? And it's designed for PLA. And it's got a lot of chemicals in it. I'm sure there is warnings on the back. It says general info. Always use gloop in a well-ventilated area. No exceptions. Gloop contains solvents. Okay, so basically this is a solvent-based glue for PLA. Okay? I know that it can wear out after a while. In other words, once I open this bottle, I have a limited time frame to use it all. It gives me a couple of months. So I didn't order the big bottle. I don't know how much I'll use this. Jam, what are you doing? My cat's down here. Remember the shredded paper I had a second ago? Okay, now he's pulling it out of the box and scattering it around the house. Anyhow, to keep reading, always use wear proper safety equipment, respirator, goggles, gloves is common. Gloop is best. Gloop is the best plastic specific adhesive, adhesive 3D, 3D prints, period. There's a lot of self-promotion right here. And preheat your printers on build plate between 440 and 80 C. Or don't use Gloop as an amazing print bed adhesive. All right. So, and it's, it also says give them the clamps. Clamp this, clamp that, clamp everything. It does say that right in here. All right, so it's just saying a whole lot of stuff. It doesn't really say too much more than that. Well, we're, I got a glue cube in front of me. We're going to give it a good old glue test. I'm going to get a couple other cubes together, and we'll put some super glue on them so to give them a fair test. But I want to see how well this stuff works. If this stuff works well, it'll be great. And there's a lot of soft uh, stuff. Um... It's a sticker on here that talks about safety info. Uh, it says, this absorbs through the skin, so you don't want to get this on the skin. And it does say it's pretty dangerous. Well, anything that's going to uh, use a solvent on this probably is. I, I wouldn't get the Tamiya extra thin on my hands either as a way of life. But <laughs> we're going to give it a try. Also, I have jelly beans here. I can't forget I got my jelly beans. Also, I have a whole bunch of stuff here that I um, need to clean up. I wanted to talk about printing a little bit. So, let's go ahead and talk about printing a little bit. Now, I started this project when I came across it. And I'll explain what it all is in a little bit. Okay, but I ended up printing some duplicate parts. Okay, this part is fine. I'm not going to explain that. 
but I can explain it here. Look at these two parts. Okay, can you see the difference? This part printed this way, this part printed this way. Now, printing it vertically required a lot of supports, all these supports down here, and I came up here to remove a lot of these supports off the bottom of this printout. This printed pretty much support free because of the orientation of the printout. I mean, it did print almost completely support free. There were no supports inside here. There were no supports. There was a little bit of a support inside here. This one is heavy with supports. But look at the difference in the finish. It's due to the nature on how the printer does its printing. It builds up layers as it goes upwards. And when you print it this way, it's real easy for it to move the layers outwards. But when you're printing it orientated this way, it can't really do these contours that well. So you get a pretty bad look to the surface of this. Whereas if you look close at this one, you don't have it. In fact, it's got kind of a pretty interference pattern going on there. Okay, in, in person, you can see it, it's shifting colors around. Just like a diffraction grating might do right in here. And you really can see it in person. You can see it on the camera with this one on the sides. Look at that interference pattern going. Okay, it makes it really pretty. So, I, that's one of the things I found out while I was doing this. The orientation of your printout part really matters. Another thing I found out is you got to be careful with your printing of supports. Because this one over here, the support, I was watch, didn't watch it in the support right there. Just a little bit printed off, just a tiny bit. It's spaghettied, and the whole part was worthless. And this is a like 12 hour print for this part because it's printing both of these black pieces at the same time. So this is a matching set right here. And we have the reprints here. And if you notice, I was careful with these and they printed nicely. Okay, so these are the reprints. These have a little bit of cleanup to do, not much. And I got a lot of cleanup to do on this because there's supports everywhere on the bottom of it. Now, it's going to look ugly on this bottom edge but the, and the top edge up here. But that's not going to matter because you're really not going to see that with the way parts go together. Okay? Yeah, so I'm going to set these two aside. I'm, I'm going to use these for experiments. This isn't wasted plastic. The, I, I, I need to do some painting experiments and some gluing experiments and a few other things and these parts are going to get used for that. So they're not going to be wasted. Um, I also want to know if the silk PLA, which is this, is stronger than regular PLA, which is this, or vice versa. Because the silk, if you get it right, sure prints nicely. Okay? What I mean by that is, look at this guy. Okay, this is part of part of this model I printed. You can see a few hiccups here and there on this thing, but it is pretty. It's got a nice color to it. It's a gunmetal type color. Took me a while to find PLA of that color. There are some little boogers on here in places, but they're minor. I mean, you really have to get up close to see the boogers. But this printed beautifully. And I need to glue these two parts together right here because this is the drill that will pierce the heavens. That should give you some hints. If anyone knows their anime, they already know what this is. <laughs> you want more hit, hit, hints? It's this guy right here. This is another thing. I tried to print these. Let me get this gold piece off. I tried to print these vertically. Don't worry, that's supposed to be that way. I tried to print these vertically and they wouldn't print because you're printing with just this little bit of area attached to the surface. I didn't do a raft, okay? Now, for those who are unaware with 3D printing, your part has to adhere to the surface while it's printing. If it doesn't adhere to the surface, it is not going to print. It's just one of those rules, okay? That's because it has to hold to the surface while the print nozzle is being moved around and moving around on this. There isn't a lot of force on them, 
But when you're printing something that is literally this tall, being stuck to a surface this big, you better have some good adhesion or the part's just going to fall over. And that's what happened on me, and it's spaghetti. Okay? So I printed this part like this. But because I printed it like this, I'm getting the difference between this kind of printout and this kind of printout coming in. You can see I got it on here. Okay. Now the way to fix this is I could print this vertically and I'm pretty sure I can print this vertically now. But the problem comes in when I go to print these parts. I don't think I can print all these vertically. I don't think I can print. Of course I have to drop that. I don't think I can print this white part right here vertically like this. It will have a lot of supports to print. Same thing with these two red parts, because they are two separate parts. This gold part I could probably print vertically, and it'd come out better. But then there will be a whole lot of internal supports inside here that I'll have to deal with. So I have to make a decision if I'm going to leave this this way, or just go ahead and reprint it. Okay? So, those are some printing decisions you have to make when you're printing things. And again, I have some supports to remove on a few pieces. Some of these pieces have a lot of supports to remove, like this one. And sometimes the PLA prints really nicely, and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm finding the non-silk PLA is a lot more prone to that. Okay? Now, what I'm talking about here is this black is non-silk PLA. It's just plain old PLA. It's Hatchbox by brand, and the Hatchbox black prints really nicely, but the Hatchbox white, my test piece I've been drilling and stuff, doesn't. You can see the edges on here and all sorts of weird artifacts on this, so that's why this is a test piece, okay? But the Hatchbox red, which is sitting right next to it here, printed very nicely, and that is getting down to an individual material setting. Now, this is Sunlu. The brand for this one was Sunlu. And it is tan in color. And it's printing like that white did. The stringy on the sides. All sorts of stuff. I'm not a big fan of this. This, And it's not. It, it could be the brand. But it's the formulation that goes into the color. Almost as much as it is the brand. As to why this is happening. But the silk, as long as I use a good brand of silk, which is this red stuff and the gold, okay, and this right here, this lovely dark purple metallic color, um, I don't really have too many issues with it. I mean, you, you get up close, you can see the print lines. I mean, really close, you can see the print lines on it. But, no. No. I, I, all the silk uniformly prints on the same setting for the most part, which I really like. I'm going to have to sand the tip of the sky a little bit. Okay. So anyhow, different brands are going to have a few different settings on the printer. And you're going to have some different problems with uh, colors, which I never knew. This green is also Hatchbox PLA, and I have had little problems with the green. Yes, it's already been used in the glue test. I'm just going to glue these other ends with the um, 3D goop. Okay, now let me clear this up a little bit. I need to start pulling off the supports off this. It's going to be a full day night project doing that. I cannot start putting this guy together until Miri gets here. Because she has told me repeatedly that she wants to be here when I put this guy together. Now this is just a little bit of the parts. I've got two boxfuls of parts on the floor down here to clean up. This thing has about 100 parts to it. It took me two and a half weeks to print it. There were a couple of reprints, but not many like this. This is a reprint. Okay. This part and its brother, these two, print together. And this is a good, like, 12, 13 hour print. So... There's a lot of print time that goes into printing something like this. Okay. Now, the model. I got this model from 
Toy Maker. Let me turn it correct. Toy Maker 3D. And I've been impressed with this model so far. Everything has fit together almost perfectly with little or no trouble. I am utterly amazed at how well these parts fit together. Okay? And he did 3B, 3D print the uh, threads inside there with no supports, which I'm also amazed at. And to give you another hint at this guy, some of you should know what he is from here. Okay? I got a little bit of cleanup to do on this. None of this is glued. This is all press fit together. And it fits together tight. Tight enough I could almost not glue it. Until I start turning it upside down. But it's going to have to be glued. And Miri will be here when I glue it. I printed a whole bunch of different colors. As you can tell here. We've got blue silk down here. We've got white. That's the same Hatchbox white. That I printed this with. We've got Hatchbox black here. And I might reprint, reprint these. And change the orientation a little bit. But I probably won't. This red, I don't remember what brand it was. It was a tr risk when I bought it because I never used that brand before. It, it printed beautifully, as you can tell. That is, I might reprint this part because of that, but I might just leave it because it's characteristic. Okay? So anyhow, I'm going to get off here and start cleaning this up. I'm going to glue one of these cubes together with this stuff. And I'll mark it with a P, then I'm going to glue some together with the super glue I've used before, which I think was this one. And we'll put the two of them together and give a strength test, because last time this won. This won the strength test that I got at Hobby Lobby. Alright, so let me set things down and get moving on this. I'm not going to record my removing the supports. I mean, I might in a little bit, but right now I don't intend to. Thank you, everyone. Be back in a bit.